ठीक ओके 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 सर ओके इधर आज साढ़े छः डर आ रहा हूँ हाँ साढ़े छः डर है सर साढ़े छः डर तो ना आप आठ मिनट रहे चार पंद्रह हाँ ठीक है ठीक है नमस्कार आई हैव द प्रिविलेज टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू द वेबिनार सीरीज ऑन कंटेम्प्ररी इंडियन फिलोसफी 
today we have with us professor uh, pramod kumar das he will be speaking on the topic man and human crisis with reference to the philosophy of j krishnamurthy hearty welcome to you sir we have with us mr devasis sadangi who will moderate the interaction session he is also in charge of recording this event welcome devashish i also welcome all the coordinators of the philosophy family i also welcome professor indu khanduri madam who may see uh, in the list a hearty welcome goes to all the participants in today's webinar excuse me there is a phone call just a well hearty welcome to all the participants in this webinar without whose support we cannot carry on the webinar series before welcoming professor pramod kumar das to address his lecture let me uh, state a few words on him as we all know professor pramod das is the man behind the philosophy family and it is on his insistence that the various seminars are conducted by the philosophy family group as i could see in professor das he has a vedantic mindset and he tries to see uh, a sort of unity in all things in all philosophies he takes inspiration from late professor rudananda rai sir professor das is presently serving as a lecturer in logic and philosophy in nayagarh autonomous college nayagarh he is the president of chinmaya mission puri he is also the chairman of wisdom intellectual forum puri and nayagarh he organizes regular seminars and webinars in various forums he is known for that throughout the state we are fortunate to have him i did i request professor das to deliver his lecture on j krishnamurthy's conception of man and human crisis as we all know j krishnamurthy was not there in the syllabus of contemporary indian philosophy in the recent model syllabus j krishnamurthy has been included as a contemporary thinker in the course we have man and nature and human crisis with reference to j krishnamurthy so in order to make us comfortable in dealing with the issue of man and nature and human crisis professor das has taken an initiative to deliver this lecture as we all know professor das is much known for his clarity of thought and many of us are new to say um, 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 j krishnamurthy's philosophy we have not studied him so deeply and i hope all of us would be learning from the lecture of pramod das sir today over to professor pramod das for the lecture Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
नमस्कार नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड इवनिंग रेस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर के एम नारायण सर माय डियर देवासीस रेस्पेक्टेड द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ दिस सेशन एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट टुडे I am going to speak on a topic which is very fond to me: man and human crisis in the philosophy of J. Krishna Murthy. This topic. is a difficult topic in the sense because it is a very vast topic and it has uh, many perspectives so i shall be very precise uh, in uh, reflecting the thought of for j krishna murthy regarding man and human crisis generally by human crisis we understand the crisis of a humanity but crisis of humanity means the crisis of values but here human crisis refers to a very vast domain here we shall discuss the human crisis of understanding human crisis crisis of our relationship crisis of our bondage attachment love all these things we shall discuss and with reference to all these crises what is the status of a man in the modern society that we shall discuss like gautam buddha krishna murti was silent about metaphysics he speaks about the psychological problems of man and which leads to different human crises including the social living and uh, his own living when human living that man lives individually and man lives in a society do krishna murti was silent about metaphysics we shall discuss metaphysical background of krishna murti's philosophy krishna murti's thought because i believe silence about metaphysics is also another metaphysics without metaphysics we cannot establish any thought so we can uh, divide our discussion into three parts the metaphysics psychology and the world metaphysical standpoint psychological standpoint and the empirical standpoint and we shall see how krishnamurti's philosophy has been rooted in deep metaphysics in deep psychological background and 
he has focused on the practical world. The position of a man in the practical world, in the society. There is a book, Beyond Metaphysics, Revisited, uh, written by Richard Winger, Wingerter. He has uh, written this book and he has said that that metaphysicians uh, ask very pertinent questions, very beautiful questions, very important questions. But when they try to uh, answer the questions, their answers are nonsensical and meaningless. I do not agree with this statement of that author. Metaphysicians ask pertinent questions, beautiful questions, and also they give very justified answers and they solve all problems. Not only that, they only ask questions. So, we can discuss, we can discuss, uh, uh, because, because uh, we, uh, uh, before, before we discuss about uh, the depth of uh, Krishnamurti's philosophy, if we shall focus on the metaphysical background, then it will be easier to understand. Otherwise, if I shall speak on thoughtless mind, um, uh, freedom from the known, whatever has been said by Jay Krishnamurti, directly, it will be difficult to understand. And Krishnamurti was an Indian philosopher, and every Indian philosopher has a metaphysical background in his philosophy, in his thought. So I have taken one verse from Kotho Upanishad. The, the verse is like that. Bayu Jatha Ek. Hello. A am I audible? Hello. Am I yes, audible? Yes, yes, audible. Okay, okay. A sound came. The sound came there. But okay, okay. The uh, verse from Kattho Upanishad says that Vayu jatha eka bhubanam pravishta rupam rupam patirupa babhuva ekastata sarva bhutaratma rupam rupam patirupa vahishya I have taken this verse from Kattho Upanishad to understand the philosophy of Jekishta Murthy. This verse says that the same air takes different forms, just like a balloon. Balloon has different shapes. And air is contained in that balloon. The same air takes different shapes. Now the question is, the paradoxical question is whether the air is in the balloon or the balloon is in the air? This is the question. Whether the air is contained in the balloon or the balloon is contained in the air? This is the, para this is the paradoxical question that we have, and this is a metaphysical question. The air inside the balloon and the air outside the balloon is the same. And the balloon, the form of a balloon, the shape of a balloon, is a temporary shape which is, uh, uh, which is made by the air. Now the question is whether the air is in the balloon or the balloon is in the air. Because inside the balloon there is air 
and outside the balloon there is air so the balloon is in the air this is one stand and the other stand is yes it is practically seen that the air is in the balloon from the empirical standpoint from the empirical standpoint we can say that yes there is air in the balloon when the seller is selling that balloon and it, it takes 10 rupees or 5 rupees he sells the form he sells the form of uh, that air he cannot sell the air he sells the form of the air that is called a balloon if the balloon is no more suppose the balloon is burst out the there is no form there is no balloon and he cannot sell it and nobody can purchase it so we have to understand what is the status of the original status the real status of ar that is contained in the balloon that that is the reality and the balloon is the appearance the balloon is only a form we have to understand it but practically pragmatically um, the seller is selling and the purchaser the child is um, um, buying that and also enjoying so that temporary form that ordinary form that changeable form that destructible form though it is false it is also enjoyable it gives enjoyment but we have to understand that the status of air in the balloon and the status of air itself as it is that a child cannot understand a child is happy with the balloon but a philosopher thinks that what exactly the balloon is is there really a balloon or it is artificially made the air outside air has made itself a form rupang rupang bahurupam babhavu rupang rupang pratirupang bahischa that rupa which is outside is also same in inside then i shall take another verse from iso upanishad 15th verse of iso upanishad hiranmanayana patrena satasya apihitam mukham tattvam pusan apabrunam satya dharmaya drishte this verse says and this is a prayer this is our invocation the highest invocation i shall say the best invocation of for human to the divinity the man prays that the rupa that covers the reality it is a prayer to the saguna brahman it is a prayer to saguna brahman that the truth that is veiled by that is covered by this patra hiranya patra the golden dish or the golden form or anything like a balloon like a balloon that you appear like a balloon you appear like a form just you remove your form and please be visible in your true color in your true shape in your in your reality this is a prayer to saguna brahman yes i worship you i i worship you i know that you are endowed with so many gunas qualities but now i pray you be visible 
visible to me with your real real shape real color all the covers be um, removed that i can see the truth i can see the formless so this is an invocation to the god with forms that 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 i pray you appear before me in your formless form that was viswarupa in bhagavad gita arjuna was thinking that lord krishna was his friend sakha a layman and he was also uh, confused that with whom he was going to fight are different forms different forms but lord krishna showed him the viswarupa that is the formless that means the formless that is behind all forms we have to understand this metaphysical standpoint then we shall enter into the philosophy of j krishna murti then we then we have two realities one is object the unmanifest the formless and the other is with forms nirguna saguna on manifest manifest in everything in everything we can find these two realities the moment we are sleeping that is our formless existence we have no form the moment we are awakening we 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 are acquainted with many forms of relationship similarly we can imp, uh, apply this principle this advaita principle this vedantic principle to the empirical world <laughs> empirical world this is the metaphysics that we can we have to understand before we um enter into the philosophy of jay krishna murti whether the balloon is real the form balloon means the form of air is real or the formless air is real because this understanding will help us living in our society living our life what do you understand what do you think if you are satisfied with the forms then that is your way of living if you are satisfied with by you are convinced of the formless then that is also your way of, your, your way of living therefore krishna murti says you are the world as you think so is your world if you think that everything is formless then your world is formless if you will think that everything is formal everything is with any form then you live accordingly you are disturbed by this form that form you have expectations you have the concept of success failure happiness unhappiness all these things will come automatically this is the metaphysical background we have to understand the formless and the form on manifest and the manifest abhyakta and vyakta now we shall come to the psychology the concept of mind topic topic is man and human crisis but a meta discussion about metaphysics psychology and society these discussion 
is only about human beings because animals do not live in society animals do not need to know about the nature of their mind and animals are not interested in metaphysics not understanding metaphysics the metaphysics means the knowledge about the not having the knowledge about reality is also a human crisis if you do not understand the reality then you are roaming in falsity and all crises start there so so far as psychology is concerned similarly it can be discussed that we have a mind and that mind is a thoughtless mind and that is the on the manifest mind that is the complete mind and whatever we think they are different forms we just apply that metaphysics on the understanding of our mind what is the status of mind the mind has an on manifest state and the mind is engaged in different forms of thinking now the question comes where you are satisfied are you satisfied with any form of thought any view any ideal any theory or you are beyond that this is the question and this very simple question this is not, not only that only jay krishna murthy has said this it is discussed in jaina philosophy it is also discussed in jain philosophy that all views are relative all views are relative philosophy is a view no philosophy is final no philosophy is a conclusion we cannot conclude anywhere that this is the final philosophy philosophy is simply a view it is also discussed in jain philosophy and in advaita vedanta also the methodology that has been applied in advaita vedanta that we cannot describe the reality therefore we can describe it in the negative way nitti nitti not this not this not this not this not this jekish namrti has applied this method that in order to understand what is non violence we have to understand what is violence well, what non violence is not what is love if you if we, we have to understand what is love then first we have to understand what love is not what is education then we have to understand what education is not because if we give a particular definition or a description to any concept that becomes a boundary boundary of our knowledge so negatively we can say we can see the limitations and we can say that this is not that nitti nitti this is the method of advaita vedanta and we shall see this is also found this is my observation this is my observation that i relate the philosophy of jay krishna murthy with advaita vedanta i i relate philosophy of jay krishna murthy with jain philosophy with the philosophy of gautam buddha with the philosophy of immanuel kant with the philosophy of david hume and many others with the upanishadic metaphysics that i told you on the manifest manifest abhyakta abhyakta if we shall discuss jay krishna murthy's philosophy independently it will be difficult to understand because no philosophy no thought is independent 
it is related to many systems the same thing has been said by other philosophers by other systems partly or wholly as the metaphysics so is the psychology that the human mind is so well organized that it can function in three levels conscious level subconscious level and unconscious level and thinking is a human possibility similarly not thinking is also a human possibility if man feels proud that man is a rational animal and man has an ability to think that man has man can apply logic man can make deductions similarly it is also a human possibility not to think to withdraw from thinking silence is also a human possibility to remain silent so what is the crisis the crisis is that man is only aware of man is only aware of one or two possibilities that man can think man can think man can think man can make philosophy man is a philosopher by education we mean that we have completed our uh, degrees we have so many certificates we have occupied many positions krishna murthy says that is really the limitation of your education that is not education therefore very beautifully he interprets like adita vedanta neti neti not this not this if you claim that this is education he will say this is not education this is not education this is not education this is not education if you say this is love he will say this is not love this is not love this is not love this is not love this is silence no this is not silence this is meditation no this is not a meditation so this approach is not only a critical approach here jekish namurti wants to go beyond to reach the synthesis and he is very much aware of he is very much aware of the problem of a human understanding and thinking that man is a man is very much privileged having a very well organized mind but the same mind is the cause of all crises the mind that binds the same mind also liberates also liberates mind binds and the mind liberates and man is nothing but a mind in the in the layers layers of evolution or layers of consciousness there comes a stage like mind and that is man if that mind is pro- is not properly trained if that mind is not properly guided then that too will lead to all types of crisis because crisis itself is a human possibility there is no animal crisis there is no plant crisis there is no matter crisis there is no bacteria crisis but there is human crisis because man knows how to issue, how to use and misuse crisis is a human possibility because man knows how to use and abuse how to use 
and misuse any privilege given to him. You speak of freedom, you speak of education, you speak of rationality. Whatever man is given, man either uses it or misuses it, therefore crisis comes out. Animals do not do that, plants do not do that. So the point is, when we, we are discussing about metaphysics, we saw that there are two states of reality, one is the unmanifest and the, the other is manifest. Similarly, our mind has an unmanifest state and also the manifest state. Manifest state is thinking. Whatever you think, the thinking of a great philosopher, the thought of a great philosopher is also a form. The thought of Immanuel Kant, or thought of Burton Russell, thought of a great professor of university. Whatever you think, that belongs to a form. And we should understand as we understand in case of metaphysics that this is a balloon, this is not air, this is a form of air. Similarly, we, we have to understand this is merely a form of a thought and we should not be biased by it. This is simply a form of thought. But we do not do that. We take a thought, we take an ideal granted. And we live our whole life with this ideal or that ideal. That is not freedom according to Krishnamurti. Krishnamurti says that freedom is not that when you are engaged with a particular thought or a particular ideal or a particular view, a particular philosophy, a particular school of thought, particular religion. No, that is not freedom. Freedom means going beyond all forms. Freedom means being the formless. So this is the psychological status of a man. We have to understand this, that this mind has two status, that our mind is thoughtless, the formless, the unmanifest, that means the, the mind which is not engaged in any thought, that is one status. The second status is our mind is engaged in thinking all the time. The third part is the world, Jagat, society, family, our practical life. Then how we live in this practical world? The man who lives in the practical world, he lives according to these two sources, the metaphysics, and his psychology. If he understands the distinction between formless and forms, or manifest and manifest of the reality of human mind, then he can live in the world different to a man who does not understand this. That is the difference between between a man of ignorance and a man of knowledge. Knowledge means we have to be conscious, we have to be conscious of our subconsciousness. I shall give you many examples that most of our time, we, every day, we live subconsciously. Subconsciously means Whenever we do something, we 
talk something we do that subconsciously not consciously though we claim that we are conscious actually we are subconscious because suppose i am giving an example to suppose we are driving at the time of driving we are not 100% conscious of driving at the time of driving we are thinking that my class time is over i cannot reach at the college in time and we think so many things because we are expert in driving we can manage to drive but we drive subconsciously we are not conscious of driving we see tv tv but we think something else we take our meal at that time we think something else that should not be that should not be but we actually we do that whenever we do something we do not give complete awareness attention to that work we do something and we think something number one this is a problem second thing is whatever we think whatever we think we think from a perspective from our understanding previous understanding from our preoccupied conviction from our thought from um, the thought of our teachers from the from the background of our education from the background of our culture so that thinking is not pure thinking second third many times actually we do not think but we react suppose you will ask a question to somebody he will not give the answer from his thinking may he may give his answer from his reactions that you don't think you just reacted you just reacted that's it that is a reaction suppose 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 a friend is unhappy with you a friend is annoyed of you he is not feeling well and at the same time you ask something the answer will be different because his answer will be prompted by his anger so whatever we think when whatever we think that is not our pure thinking because it is prompted by mean our propensities like anger like our likeness dislikeness our mood our conviction our understanding our education our culture this krishna murti says we should be free from that it is too difficult to be free from the known because whatever we have already known whatever we have already known we take that granted and we just follow that and our entire talk is based upon our previous knowledge someone lives his whole life being a theist someone lives his whole life being an atheist someone lives his whole life being a phenomenalist being an idealist being a pragmatist no one is free from an ism no one no man is free from a theory a free mind should go beyond all theories all dogmas even i should not own any theory that this is my theory this is my thesis i have working in this area many phd scholars whole life they claim that i have worked in this area that means they determine their boundary that this is my boundary 
I do not, I cannot roam in other areas. Be free from that. Come out of the box. Come out of the box. That is freedom. And that is the that is the own manifested of mind. Don't be engaged with any manifestations and accept a manifestation as manifestation. Yes, respect others' view, as, like join a system. Respect others' view. But don't say this view is the final view, this view is the conclusion. The fundamental crisis of man is man concludes. We should not conclude anywhere that this is this is the final conclusion, final submission. Another interesting thing is that whenever we are perceiving something, that perception should be perceiverless. Perceiverless means there should not be any imposition of the perceiver who is perceiving something. Who is perceiving? And that man is perceiving. So that man is perceiving something from his standpoints, from his, as Emmanuel Kant said, that whatever man thinks, man thinks with his forms of understanding. That is not freedom. Knowledge is not limited to the forms of understanding. That is the very minimum knowledge of human mind. That um, knowledge is knowledge from forms of understanding. Knowledge can be formless. Thought can be formless. That does not mean, so this is, a, this is a level of consciousness, this is a layer of consciousness that one has to transform, transcend. That does not mean that one should not think at all. That does not mean that one should stop thinking. Your thinking should not be biased by your previous convictions, by any culture, by any religion, no, by any view, that may be Advaita, that may be Dvaita, that may be any ism, any ideal, that should not be, because no ideal is final, no view is final, there is no conclusion. He is a materialist. When we say he is a materialist, what does it mean? That means that person has concluded, has been convinced by the conclusion that matter is the only reality. This conclusion is a crisis. Don't be satisfied with any conclusion because your whole life will be in the bondage of that conclusion. Don't be a victim of your conclusion. Because human understanding is an unending process. Go on, go on, go on, go on. You just think. You don't accept. You don't be a party to it. Because mind, my, my, the, the job of mind is to think, not to be indulged in any particular thought. Don't take that balloon as the reality, because balloon will disappear after some times, and the air in the balloon will be moist with the outer air. Understand that the outer air and the inner air are one and same. The most convinced thought of today shall be challenged tomorrow, even by me. Because I shall belong to another layer of consciousness. I shall become a different man. I shall become more mature. So I shall cancel, I shall reject my previous knowledge. This possibility is there. This possibility is there. So be free from ideals, isms, religions, 
So Krishnamurti says that separation is violence, division is violence. If you claim that you are a Hindu, if you claim that you are a Christian, if you claim that you are a Muslim, there comes the violence. We speak of non-violence, tolerance, forgiveness, so many things. But if you, you claim that you belong to a particular religion, that means somehow or other your existence, your thought is violent because you believe in division. You divided yourself from the whole. So by consciousness means, by unmanif unmanifest thought means, by thoughtless mind means, the awareness of the total being, the whole being. If I claim that I am a Hindu, I cannot claim that I am the whole being, the total being. If I claim that I am a Hindu, then I cannot claim that I am Sachidananda. If I claim that I am a Hindu, I cannot claim that I am a man. That is the crisis. I say I claim that I am a man and at the same time I claim that I am a not, not man. Not man means I am divided. I am Hindu means I am different from other religions, other castes. I am a materialist means I am different from idealists. I am a theist means I am different from atheists. That should not be. That is not freedom. Education, getting education and being educated are two different things. In Puri Sivich, I shall not name in our guest house, uh, some professor had visited uh, many years ago. He had come to Puri and he told me to accompany him to the sea beach. That we, we went to sea beach together, we sat there sometimes, and uh, he had collected some coins. And he had a belief that uh, to throw the coins to the sea, and that is holy, that is very, um, that is religious. And he threw the coins, being a professor. And the very illiterate boys of the fishermen, they were ready to collect the coins by the magnetic, by magnet. And they collected the coins. Professors threw and the illiterate boys collected the coins. Who is educated? Who is educated here? So our action, it is, it is not that, it is not that being having a position or having certificates, having degrees, we cannot claim that we are educated. Our behavior, our belief system, our knowledge, our practical living, practical living. Jay Krishnamurti believes in the practical living, practical truth, not with the abstract truths. Throwing coins is also an offense because we cannot destroy our money. We cannot destroy our currency. We cannot destroy. That is the property, national property. We cannot destroy that. And being a professor, we should not do that. We should be educated enough. But the illiterate uh, boys of fishermen, they collected the coins by using the magnet. They are educated. 
education means to be educated in the to be educated in the practical sense to be educated education is within it is covered by our ignorance no certificate no teachers no university no books no writings no articles can uncover it can unveil it it can be removed the ignorance can be removed only by self knowledge only by consciousness that consciousness which is free from all these things if we are a subconscious yes we have to admit that yes i am subconscious so what is real consciousness and the consciousness of subconsciousness if i am subconscious i should be conscious that yes i am subconscious if i am making any division practically practically we have to live in the society then i should have that understanding that consciousness yes i am doing that i am doing that if we are live in advaita vedanta if we are living in the practical world the world of maya then at least you should know that you are living in maya you are handling it you are managing it if you are really indulged you are really involved in the separation in the division in the forms then you are not free that is not the real sense of freedom so our mind should be free from all types of conditions all types of conditionings similarly we can describe what is love love is not that i love you because you love me i give you because i gave you because you gave me love should not be through any expectation any conditions if love is for something or by something or from something then that is not love this love is well reflected well manifested in case of a mother and a child where there is no expectation the paradox of human love is that the more you love someone the um, the person whom you love will you exploit more will you expect many things from you that is the paradox of human love and the paradox of divine love is just the opposite you love her or not isa or god loves you this is the difference if a child loves or not a mother loves so that that krishna murti defines the unmanifest mind with love that as the un unmanifest mind so is the status of love so is the status of silence what is silence silence does not mean not to speak silence does not mean that not to use any language rather suppose your wife is silent then that is um, that is dangerous that is um, problem that she should speak <laughs> that the silent wife is not really silent the silent husband is not really silent silent means there is a cause of silence if there is a cause of silence there is no silence inwardly he or she is disturbed similarly meditation does not means meditation does not mean to meditate upon something if you meditate upon something that something has be, becomes 
the limit of your thought limit of your meditation because you concentrate on something therefore krishna murti says have a meditative mind always remain in a meditative state in a meditative state means you have a neutral mind thoughtless mind means a neutral mind a meditative mind which is ready to attain everything thesis antithesis happiness opposites polarities without being affected by thesis or antithesis even by synthesis because the function of mind is only to think it's only to be aware not to be bound by a particular thought but in in our practical life what we do we really do not think we react number 1 secondly we do not think we overthink think suppose you think something that's not forget no we overthink think think overthink and we go on um, depression all the psychosomatic diseases are due to this problem that we overthink we try to escape and the highest threat of a human human being which has been which ha- which can also be treated as the crisis that is the fear of loneliness fear of loneliness fear of uh, being on a manifest we we are we feel secure with that balloon though that balloon is um, subject to destruction it is temporary it is changeable but we love that we feel secure in the falls um, bounded up for the balloon and we fear the formless we fear the loneliness what will happen after my retirement what will happen if everybody will die what will happen if my son will die if my father will die i shall be alone so that means man is man is habituated to live with different thoughts man is fond of bondage man speaks of liberation but it is not an easy task the moment man will love to live alone with the state of loneliness with the state of unmanifest that is freedom that is jivan mukta therefore everything has two properties one is the physical property the other is the chemical property physical property is the its own property that is the on manifest chemical property means how it behaves how it reacts with others what is my mind when i am alone what is my mind when i am with others what is my mind when i am alone this is one status of my existence but what is my mind when i am in a group when i am in family when i am with students when i am in a society how i am behaving hydrogen is not bad oxygen is not bad sulfur is not bad but when we shall combine their chemical property will be changed so the physical property and chemical properties should be harmonized the same mind which is stable which is peaceful in loneliness will operate similarly with that stamina with that stability when with groups 
when with others my physical property will not be disturbed with the chemistry of others that that is the psychological discipline now in the we shall come to the conclusion that there are two things man and the world similarly there are animals world plants world now you compare what is the relation between animals and the world plants and the world and the human beings and the world things take place physically practically in the empirical world there is cyclone there is earthquake there are many types of um, events that take place outside us on which we don't have any control and these events are same for animals plants and human beings but they do not react they accept the physical world very naturally having their physical property intact but man reacts physical physical world will exist physical world there will be change in the physical world but man becomes attached to the physical world therefore man suffers that is the that is because of man's imaginative power by imagination man becomes attached with the empirical world man does not learn to live alone aloof from the empirical world something happened in the empirical world i shall be a simple observer i shall observe that this happened in the empirical world i have nothing to be attached with the empirical world neither with happiness nor with unhappiness suppose i have a very beautiful building yes i have a very beautiful building if i am 100% attached to it and at the at another moment that building was destroyed because of earthquake but i am alive but i am mentally disturbed i am mentally because i cannot break earthquake i cannot break this is a natural phenomena but because of my attachment to my building to my property to my life to my existence when something happened serious seriously or something happened negative then i become helpless frustrated that is not freedom jay krishna murti has given importance upon existentialism but he differs from the western existentialists those who claim that man is condemned to be free here we believe in indian philosophy we believe that man is blessed with freedom man is blessed to be free it is a human blessing that man is free but in western existentialists existentialists claim that man is condemned to be free no man is not at all condemned to be free freedom is a human blessing be such a mind that the building the beautiful building you have built by your hard earning money that can be destroyed at any moment moment by any natural calamity have this understanding that 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 this that this is destructible that that is subject to destruction similarly life and death similarly life and death suppose you are the whole family 
uh, it's going by car and they made an accident everybody died and one person survived and that person who was with everybody at one moment after 5 minutes he is with nobody and he is disturbed he is disturbed because it is a human possibility he is disturbed because he is a man whatever is not within our control the empirical world is not within our control man tries to control it man tries to control and man 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 tries to be attached with it and that attachment that attachment leads to all types of crisis human existence is the crisis because if i do not exist if i do not exist if i become abnormal if i if i um, if i am not stable for nothing for 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 my unnecessary imagination that i had imagined that this balloon is real this was my imagination and the balloon was burst then i became frustrated if i am convinced with that the outer air and the inner air are one and the same the life means there must be death the beautiful building means that must be destroyed at one time if i know the totality totality means the thesis and antithesis both then that is the status of a free mind mind should be like that mind is not only confined to the forms of understanding understanding is it is it is a dogma because we understand from a particular standpoint our understanding is not dogma free so that is the state of samadhi that is the state of samadhi samadhi means samyak samyak adhyati iti samyak adhyati iti adhyati means to exist to sit to sit to exist samyak means in the right way perfect way that your sense organs your mind should sit with discipline that they are not disturbed that is samadhi then no no life no death no success no failure no um, 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 crowd loneliness nothing can disturb me because because the agents of disturbance they are my sense organs and the mind they are in samadhi samadhi means samyak adhyati iti they exist they sit with harmony they sit without disturbance they in, they they have no interpretation they have no conclusion they are only simply observer observer of the phenomena similarly as we are going to see um, cinema in the cinema hall they are we simply see the cinema we simply observe the cinema we do not go and uh, enter into the screen no simply we occupy our seat and see the cinema similarly the empirical world is the cinema the film we are the observer but we are not the real observer we are disturbed in course of observing we are getting indulged we are getting attached we with with that what we see this is not the case of animals this is not the case of a plants when one plant grows out of the seed it does not follow other plants but a human being compares the neighbor 
how he lives, how he thinks, how he thinks of me, what he has, what I have not. Plants do not, or but plants also live, plants also grow, but they grow of their own. But human beings grow depending upon others unnecessarily. Interpreting the interpreting their imaginations unnecessarily, overthinking their thoughts unnecessarily. So, so give rest to your mind. Give rest to your mind. Give rest. Make your mind meditative. I have seen. I have seen many people, those who belong to. Um, many religions, those who um, those who can perform satsangas daily in the evening, they become annoyed for simple things. This is a contradiction to their character. If you belong to a particular religion, how can be how can you be reactive? That that, that is the paradox. A religious mind, a religious mind cannot be reactive, cannot overreact. A religious mind is a silent mind. If you are religious, then you should discipline your mind to be silent, to be a silent observer. A silent observer really observes all, everything. A partial observer a biased observer, a rational observer, a conscious observer observes the path. That is the point. So the empirical world will exist, society will exist, government will exist, family, our neighbors, everything shall exist. We shall exist, we shall enjoy everything with a sense of detachment. Attachment is not bad, but attachment with a sense of detachment. You enjoy, but you remember the status of that balloon. With the sense of detachment, you become attached. Then that is that is not attachment. That attachment will liberate you because you are attached with the sense of detachment. You are working something, but you do not have any expectation. This is very famous in Bhagavad Gita. If your action is rooted with any selfish expectation, then there will be frustration if you will not get the expected result. Similarly, love, similarly, bhakti, similarly, education, similarly, silence, everything. There should be complete silence without any conditioning, complete freedom without any conditioning. That is the uh, the real solution to human living. That is human crisis when man fails to understand the special gift of God, that is the, uh, the power of mind, the possibility of mind. What can I do? We people think if I am double MA or triple MA, or if I have done PhD, or if I if we, uh, 50 or 100 uh, scholars have done PhD under me, and if I am I have occupied so many positions at a time, then I am a complete man. No, if a small boy of a fisherman is happy, he is for he may be formless, he is may be more educated than you. So enjoy that freedom. Enjoy that on manifest state. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat>
Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Professor uh, Pramod Kumar Das, for your uh, um, a nice lecture. Uh, Jay Krishnamurti, as uh, we all know, uh, that um, he is not taught uh, um, uh, in, in, in Odisha uh, 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 because this, um, Jay Krishnamurti is not included in the state syllabus. But recently, uh, Jay Krishnamurti, uh, uh, the philosophy of Jay Krishnamurti has been included in contemporary uh, Indian philosophy. And um, um, Professor Das has uh, really made uh, a great effort in uh, understanding him and also putting uh, the ideas of uh, Jay Krishnamurti in a very uh, soft manner, in a very clear manner, in a very precise manner. So, basing on what you have said, uh, uh, let me let me let me put uh, things in a uh, few points. Um, um, Professor Dao has started his lecture by saying that the Krishna movie is uh, silent about um, um, metaphysics. Uh, but at the same time, he says uh, uh, silence about metaphysics is another metaphysics. So he says there cannot be a thinking without uh, a metaphysical background. So with that idea in mind, he has tried to build up uh, a metaphysical background that can constitute uh, the basis of uh, the philosophy of uh, J. Krishnamurti. Now then he proceeded uh, to say that uh, the psychological problems that we have um, and, um, um, and, they, and these psychological problems lead to uh, various, uh, uh, um, various uh, lead to the social crisis. And then uh, he tried to divide uh, uh, the entire discussion into three standpoints, the metaphysical uh, psychological and the empirical standpoints and, um, uh, and, and, and a very nice example that he has given to understand uh, the metaphysical background of uh, Krishnamurti's philosophy. The example of uh, the aid in the balloon and he takes uh, puts us in a situation to understand uh, the air inside the balloon and the air outside the balloon. Try to, he, he, he tried to show um, where we are. Are we convinced with the air in the balloon and we are limited by it and or whether we understand the air outside and the air inside the balloon they are formless and they are one and the same now he raised a question uh, uh, um, um, is uh, the air in the balloon or the balloon is in the air so he has taken very nicely he has framed out whether the air is in the balloon or the balloon is in the air so he says, air in the balloon, when you take air is in the balloon, then we are in the empirical world and uh, a limited world. And we, are in a, we are in a world where there is a form. And in that sense, we are limited. But an understanding that, uh, that the balloon is in the air and that balloon is for a limited time and it has to adjust, then we see that the air inside the balloon and the air outside the balloon is the same air that is formless. So he says that... Uh, we need to see in the philosophy of Krishnamurti, uh, we need to see uh, of the formless behind all forms. We need to see the unmanifested uh, behind uh, everything that is uh, uh, manifested to us. So very nicely has framed out. And then he tried to say that uh, from the psychological point of view, he tried to um, uh, show us that, um, uh, that, that, that man has uh, a number of possibilities innumerable possibilities that man has but it is because that man restricts himself to a uh, few possibilities and overlooks or ignores uh, somehow uh, the other possibilities that there is a uh, lot of crisis in the world and he um, and, and and at one point he says that it's man who uh, knows um, uh, how to use how to misuse and how to abuse so man is it's man who is responsible for the crisis because because man is not man not only uses he also abuses and also misuses so that's how um, there is a crisis there is a problem now again he says that man uh, from the philosophy of uh, uh, J Krishnamurti uh, Professor Das points out that man is unconditionally free but the problem is man gets conditioned with the forms. Man is conditioned by what he has, but what he sees, 
but by, by, by what he knows. And very nicely he says that uh, uh, it is very difficult on the part of man to be free from what that is known and what that is seen. So there lies the problem because once we are restricting to some knowledge or to some form, uh, we are restricting ourselves to a particular thing and the reality, but, but the reality being the formless, the unmanifest, we fail to see that. So once we realize that the reality is formless, it is unmanifest, okay, it is, uh, we, 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 we reach a stage where we are unconditionally free. This is what uh, Krishnamurti uh, mm, tries to say. Try to, uh, tries to say that man is basically unconditionally free, but the problem is he restricts himself to the balloon and the air in the balloon. But once he sees that the balloon is just a temporary uh, feature of the world, he comes out of all forms, all manifested and sees at the background that uh, that the, the, the reality is unmanifest and the reality is formless. Towards the end of the lecture, he tried to see uh, say that uh, man need to exist. Well, man exists, has to exist. But and and, and being uh, having an existence, he has an attachment. There is nothing. There is no problem in being attached. But being attached, man needs to attach, get attached with things with a sense of detachment. So there is attachment, but the attachment needs to be with a sense of detachment. And then he points out that um, a pure mind, a religious mind, uh, is never divisive. It is never uh, separative. It is rather uh, it's a unifying mind. And it's when we have um, uh, 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 when we try or when we acquire such a mind, then uh, we become uh, say we, we see the formless um, as the source and strength of all that we see. The forms that we see, the forms are nothing but the separations, the, the divisions, and these divisions are nothing but the products of ignorance. So at the end, he says, it is the formless that is real, it is the unmanifest that is real, and that we need to realize. So thank you, uh, Professor Das, for your very nice lecture. And, um, and, and I finally said the crisis, the, the human crisis, is to uh, the realization lack of realization that the forms, that behind the form would be something that is formed. Okay, so the failure of us to realize this is the cause of human crisis. And um, I hope a number of questions will be there in the chat box. Sir, 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 hello. Uh -huh. Sir, you spoke better than me. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you for you, your Thank you for your compliment. You, you synopsized better than me. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, sir, thank you for your compliment. I see um, certain questions in the um, uh, chat box. Um, now I request um, uh, um, Mr. Devasi Sarangi to uh, carry on the interaction session. Over to Devasi Sarangi. Sir, uh, so good evening to all. Uh, Swarnaprabha so Biswal, uh, she wants to know, <clears throat> should we claim that we are Indians or not? What is your opinion about Gandhiji's non-violence in relation to Krishnamurti? Hello? Hello? Is it audible? Uh, hello? Yes, hello? Sir. Yes, sir. Is it uh, the, the, the basis, I, I am grateful to you for your kind help. Thank you. Uh, in, in organizing all these uh, programs, you are you are doing a lot. We 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 all are grateful to you. And to this question uh, asked by Sonna Prabha Madam, uh, I shall say uh, she she is asking that should we should we claim that we are Indians or not? Any claim means uh, you are accepting a form. Yes. As I said that uh, we have to exist in this world, so we have to abide by the rules and regulations of, uh, of a state, of the government. So, because we live in India, we can say that we are Indian, but from the standpoint of the formless, uh, from the standpoint of a man, we should not divide ourselves claiming that we are Indians. That is your choice. 
whether you are satisfied being a man or being an indian wherever suppose you will stay in america so you will be an american australian indian that does not matter but don't divide your whole being as indian or american or to any geographical area you are a man and if you go beyond that you are sachitananda you are brahma swarupa atma swarupa you are pure consciousness okay so your claiming is a political question that is a um, uh, um, question of your existence yes you because you belong to a particular geographical area that is your identity you have to live but by your thought you should not be convinced that you are an indian because any division leads to violation that is violation if you, if you claim that i am an indian naturally you will have hatred for a pakistani for the man of any other country that is not your that, that is not our nationalism okay we are man we all basundhav kutukam we are claiming basundhav kutukam am what is about indian then second question is what is your opinion about gandhi's non violence in relation to krishna murti non violence is non violence it is not gandhi's non violence or krishna murti's non violence krishna murti says that in order to understand non violence we have to understand what violence is first of all we have to understand our own status if we um, if we are claiming that i am a hindu or i am an indian then we are in violence we should that is the status of that is the stature of non violence that is the point of krishna murti and mahatma gandhi also gives a very well conception about non violence and everybody knows it but what krishna murti says that is point of discussion everybody knows about gandhi's non violence krishna murti say claims krishna murti says even if you divide yourself as an indian or an american or a hindu or a muslim that is also violence that is the point go to that level of consciousness that you are that on manifest you are not manifest there from your manifest state there will come love non violence forgiveness everything if you claim that you are an indian you live in such a country where mahatma gandhi was living and this is the principle of mahatma gandhi is non violence that is violence because you divide yourself don't divide thank you uh, thank you very much sir and now a question is from raja misra see uh, he wants to know does krishna murti by admitting reality is invested leads toward an abstract concept rather rational no 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 not at all pama krishna murti rejects abstract truths krishna murti advocates living truths so you have to live in the world you will not uh, you, you will not reject this world i told that you have to exist in this world but with the idea and that you are not a party to this world you are not a party to this world okay you live with many relations but you should not be indulged with any relation we you should have that state of loneliness in within you then only you will be able to live with others impartially with a sense of detachment that is the point you that person can pragmatically live in the world successfully who has a sense of detachment who has the wisdom of that on manifest that i am nothing i am nothing i am empty 
I am that air which can take the form of a balloon, which can take the form of the water boat. Water boat. In the sea, there are water boats. We use that. And pragmatically, we use that. Ten people sit on the water boat and travel on, in the sea. There is air in the water boat. So I am that air who can be in a balloon, who can be in a water boat, who can be uh, in the uh, my, my breathing system. In everything, I can live comfortably. If I am attached to with a, a particular nation, particular religion, particular relation, then that will be, that, that will be the problem. This is the point. So we should have the knowledge of the manifest in order to live successfully with the manifests. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, so there are no such question as I am seeing. If anyone wants to ask something, then they can unmute themselves and ask their question. Hello. Channel queries. You can ask yourself by unmuting yourself. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for your nice response. Uh, now we go to uh, uh, Rao, sir. Okay. Um, thank you, thank you, uh, Debatis, uh, for uh, nicely carrying on the interaction session. So I thank um, the speaker, Professor Pramod Madas, and the moderator. Uh, uh, Debatis Sedangi and all the participants in this webinar. So it, it was a nice webinar. We learned a lot from uh, the Das. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice lecture. And, um, and uh, I hope Philosophy Family will be conducting. And uh, one thing, uh, let me remind you tomorrow we have a webinar uh, on uh, the philosophy of Rabindranath Tagore. So please attend. Uh, um, uh, the webinar tomorrow it will be starting at 6 p.m. Okay, um, so please attend. Thank you, thank you all for your uh, attendance till the last. And I see many faces, especially I, I should thank special thank to um, um, Dr. Anirudh Pandha because he is the man Malab, who starts and uh, he stays throughout the webinar. And one more, uh, uh, Dr. Ratnakar Gajendra sir, he these um, and, and sometimes Basant Kumar Das sir also. Malab, I should be um, um, uh, very much thankful to them. They, uh, they, are, they are always there. They never leave the meeting. They are uh, from the beginning till the end. They, um, they support us. They support the entire uh, 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 the, the, the webinars. So that's how um, they keep connected with us. They sometimes send the blessings to uh, the members of the philosophy family. So it's how the philosophy family grows. So with all love and all support from all members, I hope plus the family will be connecting um, more webinar with much success. Thank you. Thank you all for your uh, participation and your support. Thank you. And I hope tomorrow we'll meet uh, at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.